Hello, Rock will cut here again, and it's the uh, end of the third week of Lent. We're talking about fasting. How goes it? How goes it? Now, usually, usually, by the third week, I'm either fudging or I'm giving up the ghost on the Lenten fast myself. So let me, let me talk about the three that I see as the, the three points along a continuum and what they do. So some people by the third week and the fourth week and probably the fifth week will, will report perfect fasting. They're just right there. Very good, very good. Other people after three weeks and maybe after four and five, not so perfect fasting. Very good, very good. The other one is total collapse. <laughs> and I've done that. Believe me, I've done that. Fasting, I'll give it up. Here are some things I, I want to put this, I want to put those three in, in this context. It's Novarim May, Novarim Te. And Novarim May is what what fuels me what drives me to do what i do so that i could know myself to be further fit for um, encountering christ and being encountering christ nover te now i'm not a perfectionist i'm not i do have um uh, minor obsessive compulsive tendencies. I count things, stairs. Um, I count down so I can uh, relax at night to go to sleep. Um, when I'm putting the dishes away in the dishwasher, it's precise in this order. The rest of my life, not so much. So I'm not afflicted by um, perfectionism obsession to be have everything neat and tidy. I know people from decades of hearing confessions that some are afflicted by um, scrupulosity. Gotta get it right. Gotta get it right. If it's not right, the world collapses. You get it right, then look at what a good boy I am. I got it done. I don't know if that's you or not, but the tendencies toward um, getting it right, I, I, I don't find that myself, so I, I offer my uh, uh, word of hanging in there to people who are perfectionists that way. Second thing, not so perfect uh, adherence to whatever you chose. This is not me telling you what to do. I am recommending highly fasting, almsgiving, and prayer, but it's up to you to choose stuff. And for folks who have had not so perfect fasting, in other words, well, I just took a little bit of ice cream or I just took a little cookie or whatever, doesn't matter. No very may. What goes on there with it? What's my response to not having it perfect? Chagrin, <sighs> guilt, What's the um, possibility of getting back up and trying it again? Uh, which, which probably is the telling point to me. Third part, total collapse. Um, I just gave up the whole dang thing. Now, some of us will just say, oh, well, that's life, and then um, not worry about the rest of length and say, I'll try it again next year. But for some, in all three of these categories, there's remorse and shame for not getting it right, for not living up to my expectations, and as some people I hear, not living up to the best version of myself, um, not living up to the person God wants me to be. Here's what I find personally with remorse and shame. They leave me on the uh, hamster wheel 
of trying to prove myself adequate and worthy. That I'm worthy of God's love, that I'm adequate and merit God's love that way. It, to me anyway, take it, or, take it or leave it, doesn't work that way. It just doesn't work that way. What I propose is um, collecting data. Yep, data and collecting data so as to have a better picture of myself, no there may. So say, Christ meets me where I'm at. Well, here's where I'm at. Selfish, self-serving, frightened, inadequate, alone, afraid, unworthy. I believe that's where Christ met sinners. Now, here's the one thing that I think could be a helpful touchstone. Again, take it or leave it. It's Friday's Gospel. The scribe, a scribe comes to Jesus and says, what are the two top commandments? What are the, what's the main commandment? Love your neighbor as yourself, love God. Okay, well said, teacher, you are right in saying he is one, there is no other than God. And to love God with all your heart and with all your understanding, with all your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself is worth more than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. What I want to do now in Lent is notice in my Lenten practices, how do they affect, how does my practices lead me to love God and neighbor? It's worth more, loving God and neighbor is worth more than all burnt offerings, all these sacrifices that we're, we're, we're engaging in. I'm just saying engage in these practices so as to learn the terrain, the geography, the make a map of your inner life so as to say, oh my goodness, Jesus is meeting me on the mountain, is meeting me in the swamp, is meeting me in the thicket of the forest. Here I am. So um, whatever you've done so far with um, fasting, great. What have you learned about yourself? How do you present yourself to be met by Christ? And um, is it worth to you picking it back up to engage it again? So, God bless you. God bless us all. Grant us all the freedom we seek through Christ our Lord. Amen. Peace be with you all.